All right, welcome back to the channel, two-stroke turbo fans. You can see my dog Stella here laying in the grass, in the weeds in my parking lot, in the cracks of my parking lot. The weeds grow and she's laying in the shade because it's another hot summer day here. 2023, late August, and she's just hanging out. But enough with petting the dog. We got to get to the bones, the, the moral of the story, the the car we're going to showcase today. What is it? Can you see it? It's up on the lift there. I always try to video highlight cars that are different, unique, or maybe have a challenge to them. This car is not unique. It's a very simple car. Well, it's a common car. It's pretty dusty. It's a 2007 Lexus IS250. Might be called other things in other countries. Kind of a sporty car. It's got sporty tires and sporty wheels and sporty rims. Has a 2.5 V6, but it has a really unique problem. And I have to give you a bit of a backstory on it. Customer is driving the car over one of the big bridges in town, the Fremont Bridge actually, which is a huge span. Uh, and the car died. No warning lights, nothing. No indication that anything was wrong. Just completely died. Couldn't restart it, couldn't roll the windows down. Complete loss of electrical, complete. And I thought, well, it's gotta be the alternator. That just sounds like what it might be. But the one thing that I didn't know is this car has electric power steering. And these things are known for the computer that runs the power steering is located conveniently right underneath the battery. If the battery discharges any gases or off gases, or leaks any acid, it drips down the battery tray right onto the computer that controls the electric steering. And I thought, well, maybe that's it, because that would suck up a bunch of power. The problem is, and I'll show you here, when you hook this car up, watch the arc that goes between the post. When I do this, you can see smoke actually coming off there. That's a lot of draw. Something is sucking a ton of power when I plug this thing in. So I charged the battery, the battery was completely flat. Car would barely run, like barely run. Steering wasn't working, uh, would barely stay running. It was, I put my meter on there and it was drawing power so fast that the alternator couldn't keep up. So I was like, oh, what is, what the problem? With? No lights, no check engine light, no, no warning lights of any type. So I started poking around and unplugging things. And if you hook up a, a meter between the positive terminals, you can usually get a good idea of how much voltage is being sucked. So I put my meter up, everything seems to draw voltage, like everything. And I know this car's got a computer, so it needs to keep a memory going. So I unplugged the, the air, air conditioning compressor because I thought, well, maybe the air conditioning clutch is stuck on. I disconnected the starter. I thought maybe the starter got stuck on. I disconnected the electric power steering. I disconnected the alternator. And this is what's really weird, is when I disconnected the alternator, oh boy, let me grab that phone, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that, where were we? We were talking about this car and it's electrical vampire draw. It has a huge vampire draw. And I know you guys can't smell because it's a video, but whenever this car is plugged in, in other words, the battery is connected, there's a terrible burning smell. It smells like asbestos, like from a transformer on a power pole, and it just stinks. I can't tell where it's coming from because I just don't want to smell it, but it smells bad. So that should be a first clue. Something's burning. Where there's smoke, there's fire. So let's go underneath here. Let's show you a couple things. I got all the panels. All the panels are over there on the side. Let's go underneath. I got my light on here. We've got our electric power steering here. This is our steering rack. See the boots that go to the tie rod ends. I unplug that, that didn't make a difference. I unplug the starter, which is buried. Talk about buried. It is up in, this is our oil pan. There's your starter up there. It's got the red tag on it. That didn't seem to make a difference. And this is our air conditioning compressor. I disconnected that. That didn't make a difference. And right above it with the black thing, that's your alternator. Now. I was just reaching up in here. I was like, ow, that's hot. This shaft, which is a 
I think it has what's called a decoupling shaft on it, was hot. And I was like, aha. Uh -huh. I did a couple of tests on the alternator, just the temperature of it. Let's get, oh, there we go. With my, where is my heat gun? Where did that go? Oh, well, let me find it. Okay, so I've got my non-contact thermometer. It's got a little red laser there you can see, and I'm going around the engine compartment. It's warm in the shop today, but you can tell everything in this area is hot. And if I shine the light or the, the uh, laser right about there, let's see what are we get in here temperature wise. It's still over 100, 104, where the rest of the engine is in the 80s, which is ambient temperature. There's something wrong with the alternator. And I, it took me a while to figure it out. And the only way I really figured it out was actually by touching the shaft and going, wow, that's really hot. That shouldn't be that hot. Um, the car is cold. I haven't, it hasn't been driven in a couple hours. Just drove it in a couple hours ago to diagnose it. So what is the, what is the moral of the story here? It's not always what you think. And I'm a pretty well-seasoned mechanic. I've been doing this 40 years. Um, and this one threw me for a loop because I was sure it was the steering rack because of all the internet hustle and bustle and the steering didn't work on this car. But I think the steering didn't work because the battery was too low or been reset or shocked in some aspect. I'm sort of glad it's the alternator, even though it is a pain to get at. It's right there. I don't know how it comes out, but I'll figure it out. But I think I've positively ID'd it, not because the light was on the dash, not because I had any other clues. It was just common sense and touching things. And that shaft was warm. Nothing else was. So there you go. That's the tip and trick for the day. If you can't figure it out, touch it. Maybe it's hot. <laughs> All right, let's get this car back on the road. Let's make somebody happy. Somebody needs to drive to work. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.